Okay, this will be a different sort of video. This is to uh, show how to start making your own animations from a Mixamo-based skeleton um, to bring into Godot. Uh, well, into, into anything, but I'm just going to show kind of what's standard for Godot. Um, so here I have a Mixamo skeleton. Uh, this could be a Mixamo model, but it's just a skeleton and a mesh. Um, I need to first parent these because I, I actually don't have these guys connected yet. So um, I've got my mesh selected. I will shift click my armature, my bones, right click parent automatic weights. I can quick check that that worked by going to bone uh, pose mode and wiggle in some bones. I can see my mesh is moving. Um, I'm not going to bother with automatic uh, with checking the weight painting or anything. I'm just going to dive in so I can get into the animation stuff. Um, so um, I've got the Mixamo rigger tool. I can link that in the description. Um, that is their open source rigger that will take their skeleton and give it a rig. So I'm going to click my little, my skeleton, I'm going to bounce back to object, but I'm going to click my skeleton here uh, on that Mixamo tool and off on the toolbar and I will click create control rig. Leave it on the defaults and blam, we have a rig to move our character with. If I go into pose mode, you'll see I can grab the control nodes and wiggle my character about. These are better for rotations. Um, yeah, so that's that. Now we need to start making the animations. When you first go to the animation tab, um, it's not quite to preference, or maybe it is. You just wanna, I, I usually like to have my upper left uh, window here in the nonlinear animation option. So again, click in that toolbar, nonlinear animation, that NLA editor. Um, and then down here, well, this is where we're gonna start adding some keyframes. So first I'm gonna select all, Hitting A, I'm going to right click, I'm just going to insert a keyframe. So now you can see all this, every single rig's location is now marked. Um, I'm really not going to pay to, to attention to much of it except for the, the summary and whatever one I'm clicked on in any, any given moment. Um, I'll usually just use the summary line to control uh, the individual nodes. I'll click on the ones I'm interested in moving. Um, but let's go ahead and, well, let's actually change this a little bit. So I'm just going to grab my little rig, and I think I'll even mirror for a moment just to get things going. I'm going to bring down my arms by grabbing the hands, and let's rotate those and put them down. Uh, maybe I'll even maybe bend some of my fingers so he's not so uh, stiff looking. Let's move in my arms a little bit more, and maybe we'll let his knees relax. Uh, a little bit. He's looking really derpy. But I just need to show you this. So again, select all, insert keyframe. So now he's locked in that position. I'm going to go out uh, some 30 frames down here just by clicking and dragging wherever I want to go. Um, I can now shift a position. Uh, let's move. Oh, let me turn off that, that mirror ring. Let's, uh, I don't know, let's make him do, he's, he's in the Ministry of Fancy Walks. We'll move a foot forward. We'll move a foot back. Maybe I'll even Give it a little bit of a, whoop, there we go. Give it a little bit of that. And uh, maybe we'll raise an arm up and we'll raise an arm out. And I'm gonna select all, insert key, keyframe. In fact, I, I like this so much, I might uh, even just actually maybe drag that over here. Uh, I'm gonna paste this pose again. Let's uh, copy pose, go back to pre, uh, point zero, paste pose. Uh, well, I'm gonna paste flipped on the X. That's a, that's a handy tool. So uh, I liked my first step here, way over here, this wacky do thing. Select all, right click, copy pose. I'm gonna go to a new location and at right click, paste, flipped on the X. So what that does is rather than pasting the same pose, it pastes the exact opposite pose. I will then right click and insert keyframe. So now I have uh, right foot up, going to a neutral, up into another fancy ministry walk. So let me go ahead and uh, reduce down here where you can see I've got my start and my end keyframes. Um, this will just let me see better in a loop what I've created. So I've got this ministry walk. This is amazing. Um, what's fun is the editor controls that you'd see in, in the rest of the you know mesh building uh, also work here. So if I select all my nodes down in this bottom window and then hit S to scale, I can shrink this down and then G to grab and move it. That'll make it, uh, you know, it's, it's nice and easy to control. All the controls are the same throughout the interfaces. So there we go. Now we got a little bit more of a wackadoo little march. Uh, although I do need to bring it back to neutral again uh, a couple frames after. So let's do six frames after 13. That'll put us over at nine. Uh, paste pose, insert keyframe, and now that should be a true loop. Let's take a look if I'm closer. Oh, no, I'm an idiot. I, that's not true because I need to bring it to the last of that one. Um, but you get the idea. I don't need to go through all this. 
because it needs to reset back to the first. But anyway, that's the idea. So I've got I've got an animation built. Um, so now here's the important part. Once all this is done, is uh, pushing down these animations up here uh, in the NLA editor, so I can start working on another animation. Because again, this is for a video game. Um, in Godot, if you name your animations with a dash loop, it'll keep it as a loop. So if I if I truly do like this, and this is <laughs> the loop I'm happy with for my walk, uh, I could call this something like walk dash loop. And then on import into Godot, it will know that's a loop. It'll automatically mark that as a as a cycle to, to repeat infinitely versus a one shot if I did not include that. So with that renamed, I will hit this push down button. That animation now exists. It is done. I don't have to worry about doing anything more with it. If I need to edit it, I can right click and say start editing stashed action. And I get all that information back to keep working. Once I'm done, I can click off it. That animation is done. Um, but what I can do now, now that I don't have that, I can be like, well, now I need, uh, maybe I want to turn this into a, I don't know, some sort of jump attack. So here, maybe, maybe I'll even, I want to base it off the same one. So I'm going to right click this guy, I'll duplicate him. I've now got a, a new walk loop and I've got my walk loop zero. I'm going to edit this guy because, hey, I liked some of these starting poses that I, I had here. So let's, uh, let's do this. Let's remove you. Let's make a, a, a flying kick or something. So I'm in this position here. I'm going to be in that position later. So let's uh, let's do a little wind up action. We'll uh, do like a, I'm getting ready to, to jump in the air sort of a thing. You can kind of get the idea. Ho ho ho, he's gonna be so ready to jump in the air. All right, so he does a quick little get ready. And then I'm just gonna grab all of him except for his root on the floor and put him in the air. And I'll even reset his rotation. Alt R can reset the rotation. Alt G will reset the grab. Uh, Alt whatever general thing will reset that that control. Um, let's go ahead and give him a little bit of a, a leaparoo. And actually, since I'm going to be adding the, a lot of altitude in uh, in Godot, I actually don't really need him to go very high in the air because I will give that actual air in in game. I'd actually rather the animation stay kind of close to his roots, his ground. So I'm going to do that for his airborne jump. So that's actually a little bit better for me. <laughs> Although I would like to see his legs extend to truly give a jump look. So let's insert another keyframe, and I'll give him a look like he jumped. There we go. So now he winds up, he leaps, and he is airborne. And I can even copy and paste that one, insert keyframe, and kind of show that he's made some. Oh yeah, we were going we to have him kick. My mistake. But this is not a jump animation, this is a kick animation. So we're just gonna, let me rotate that so I can actually see what I'm doing here. Uh, rotate, uh, Alt R to rotate that back to default, and Alt G to bring that back. Let's just get that clean. I had ended up with this like way too rotated around. There we go, so now I've got my, my fly kick happening here. I've accidentally moved my thumb joints at some point, so ignore the thumbs now are now like rotated around. Anyway, insert keyframe. Let's bring that in. So now I've got a wind up, a jump, and a and a very awkward looking kick. Man, yeah. That's what you get uh, for Euler animations. If you end up doing a, a rotation too soon, you haven't helped guide it through its rotation, um, you can end up with these weird snappings where legs suddenly and feet suddenly rotate full 360 around. Um, if you want to avoid that, you'll want to change to, instead of Euler anima rotations, you want to swap to quartillion, uh, quaternion before you even begin, because you're going to lose all this animation data if you change now. Uh, but if you end up doing a lot of really dynamic animations, really fast things with a lot of heavy rotation that go over a 360 degree rotation, um, it can be better to use quaternion just to avoid that full rotation snapback when, they, when it tries to, it's running the lerp logic, and that, uh, that can have a hard time rotating around. Um, anyway. But yeah, I've got I've got my I got my fly kick now, so I'm done. I'm gonna double click this. I'll name this uh, fly kick. You can kind of ignore these ones. These ones don't really matter, uh, but you can right click and rename these as well. I can name this fly kick. Additionally, if someone's digging into your data, you can actually change one more location. If I'm editing down here, I can also swap to where is it? Is it the dope sheet? Oh, where is it? There's one action editor. In the action editor, this is actually a good view to be in. I like being in the action editor. Uh, you can rename the actual animation data fly kick, which is useful for someone else if they're coming through looking at the animation's data closer. So there's three places to rename, but the only one that matters to Godot is this one. 
but the people who probably work in Blender more, the only one that matters is probably this one. So uh, good to know. That is the end of my video. This is not meant to be easy. I'm actually just making this quick video for somebody who already knows animation uh, from Maya, and I just wanted to show how the NLA ed editor works in Blender. Um, so sorry, this one was not spoon-fed. It was just going through quick. Um, and there are also methods to add like Bezier curves and change these into more, uh, not just straight linear lerps from one position to another. Um, maybe check out some videos on that because I'm trying to keep this really tight. I've actually got to get going, but hopefully that helps. But hey, I got two animations. When I upload these into Godot, I can use these separately and that's great. Uh, I highly recommend doing something like making an idle position of what is your character's neutral stance and then keep duplicating that one to make animations come off of that idle. So whenever they're done doing an animation and they're going to return back to an idle, it's always kind of natural looking. Um, all right, that's it.